Many viral infections affect the nervous system, and at the start of the current global pandemic, it soon became apparent that infection with SARS-CoV-2 would be no different. What was not known was in what way COVID-19 would manifest itself within the brain and spine, and hence what would be the neuroradiological features in children. The American Society of Pediatric Neuroradiology put out a call to colleagues for cases of children with encephalopathy, which was thought to be related to COVID-19. Despite the risk of false exclusions, we were strict in only including cases where SARS-CoV-2 infection was proven to be causal. We remotely reviewed 38 cases submitted from eight countries and correlated the imaging findings with the following clinical data. Cases were grouped based on the clinical and temporal presentation of these children. In essence, the children with acute COVID-19, children who were asymptomatic for COVID-19, and children who fulfilled the CDC criteria for multisystem inflammatory syndrome. And finally, children who couldn't be categorised into the above groups that had neurological disease but was explained by SARS-CoV-2 infection. In category one, the most common imaging finding was of an autoimmune type imaging picture, which we've referred to as being an ADEM-like imaging phenotype. Two children had myelitis, in one of whom there was an aggressive acute necrotizing myelitis with waxing and waning of signal abnormalities over time in keeping with ongoing active disease. Two children in this category also demonstrated the fairly frequent finding of neuritis involving the cranial nerves and or the cauda equina, which did not always correlate with nerve dysfunction. The acute COVID-19 category also included four children with fulminant co-infections. For example, this five-year-old child who presented with fever, headache and seizures, despite having been completely well prior to presenting with COVID-19. The cases of co-infection were in children who prior to their COVID-19 diagnosis had been well, and sadly all of these co-infection cases were fatal. Category 2 comprised eight children with the imaging findings shown here, but in addition one child had a vasculitic thrombotic presentation. All of these children did well except one child who remains ventilator dependent over six months into their disease course. Children with multi-system inflammatory syndrome they exhibited ADEM-like changes and high T2 flare signal lesions in the splenium of their corpus callosum, and a previously unreported finding of diffuse or focal myositis. All of these children did well. Category 4 included cases of neuritis involving multiple cranial nerves. One child had a vasculitic thrombotic picture with acute infarction of their left midbrain, with thrombus in a feeding anterior perforator artery and vessel wall enhancement. This is the largest study to date of CNS imaging manifestations of SARS-CoV-2 infection in children. Mild to severe COVID-19 occurred in healthy children without pre-existing morbidities. Consistent disease patterns emerged of which ADEM-like abnormalities of the brain and spinal cord and neuritis were the most common. Cranial nerve enhancement may occur without any correlative cranial nerve deficits and cerebrovascular complications were less frequently encountered in children as compared to that reported in adults. Sadly, fatal fulminant atypical co-infections were seen in previously healthy children who presented with acute symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infection.